two years ago, my husband and I moved into a small city apartment. And for those two years, I've spent what feels like countless hours trying to figure out how to crack the code on how to keep the place clean, at least somewhat clean, to create somewhat of a haven for us instead of a complete disaster zone. It hasn't always been easy. I'm certainly still not perfect, but through a lot of trial and error, I have improved. And today I want to share everything that's worked for me with you. So without further ado, here's my best advice on how to keep a small apartment clean most of the time. I've lived in bigger houses before and I honestly feel that in a lot of ways, small houses can be harder to keep clean and organized. This seems counterintuitive because in a smaller house, you literally have less square footage to clean. But I think that with a small space, the mess seems out of control faster because you have less space available for it to spread out. You also tend to have a lot less storage in smaller homes. So that tends to make it harder for you to find a place for all the things that you do own. You might have to leave more things out that a bigger house would be able to tuck away in cabinets. And overall, it can just feel like no matter how much you tidy, the house gets messy again faster than you can say, put that thing back where it came from or so help me. For me, I can really boil my success down to 12 things that when done consistently, ensure that the house never gets out of control messy and always looks relatively kept tidy and clean. Some of these things may sound very basic, maybe even cliche. Bear with me, when you put them all together, they work. I will also be sharing a free downloadable checklist at the end of this video that you can print out and use as a guide to keep you on track. So make sure you stay tuned for that and let's get started. One of my first goals of the day is to make my bed every morning. Like I said, basic stuff, but it really does make a big difference. The thing is, when you make your bed, not only does it take your room from a four to a solid eight in a matter of minutes, but it also helps you feel like you've accomplished something as soon as you get up in the morning, which in turn can give you motivation to do your next task. Even if your nightstands are a cluttered mess and your floor is embarrassingly cluttered and dusty, when your bed is made, your room just looks cleaner. Trust me, it's science. The second thing I try to do every morning is put away all the dishes from the night before. This usually happens while our coffee is steeping. We make it in a French press so it takes about five minutes to brew. And so during those five minutes, I try to get all the dishes put away. I do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, the dishes have had the whole night to dry. So you're skipping the part where you have to, you know, dry them. Life hack, anyone? Number two, and more importantly, it gives me all the space I'll need for the new day's dishes. So that when it comes time to clean up after meals, I don't have to first put away dishes before I start doing the dirty dishes. I can just start washing. For me personally, I've just found that I'm way more likely to actually clean up after meals if I make it easier on myself by not having to do two tasks and just having to do one. The third thing I try to do every single morning is a quick wipe down of the bathroom. We just have one, hence the small apartment, but literally all I do is set a five minute timer and clean what I can. Usually this includes the countertop every day just because I feel like that is the place that collects the most hair, water, and grime. And then I usually have time for at least one more task, whether it be cleaning the toilet, a quick wipe of the shower, taking out the bathroom trash, or even wiping down the floors. The bathroom used to be such a project for me. I always felt like I had to cut out at least 45 minutes in order to get the deepest, sparkliest clean possible. But you know what I've found is that sometimes done is better than perfect. And having that perfectionist mindset where I had to cut out that time or I couldn't do it at all just led to the bathroom being a lot dirtier a lot more often. But try this and I'm telling you, you will be shocked at how clean the bathroom stays by just wiping it down something, anything for five minutes a day. I'm telling you, it's magic. The fourth thing that has made a huge difference in the cleanliness of our house has been setting a two minute timer in the morning when I get up and at night before bed to clean off surfaces that have collected clutter. Again, you will be surprised how much you can clean in just two minutes, especially when you're doing this consistently morning and night, day in and day out, you will see the effects compound over time. Personally, I am someone who is 
very bad about putting things away after I'm done using them. So clutter gathers very quickly in my house. And this has been one of the biggest game changers for me to fix that. And since it's only two minutes, there's literally no excuse I can make as to why I don't have the time to spare. Again, magic. My next tip is to do one load of laundry a day, or at least one load every weekday, which is what I do. I used to just wait till the basket was full and then have one ginormous laundry day with four to five loads. But as you can imagine, this took up the entire day. And by the fourth or fifth load, I was so sick of folding that I would just end up leaving it on the couch for days and days. But since I've switched to one a day, it's been a lot more manageable. We never run out of socks. And eventually it does get to the point where you don't even have a load of laundry to do, depending on your family size. So you get an unexpected break. But I will tell you, it has been so much less stressful, so much more manageable, and I think a really great habit to get into. Tip number six is to clean up after every single meal. I know, I'm upset about this one too. I always hoped I could find a hack that would require me not to have to clean the kitchen ever again, but that's just not happening, so here we are. I am not exaggerating when I say that the kitchen was my nemesis, the bane of my existence. It was constantly in a state of disaster, and then I would muster up the courage to spend an hour and a half cleaning it. I'd feel really proud of myself, make a meal and say, it's just a few dishes. I can clean this up later. And next thing you know, I was right back where I started. Terrible. It takes time to form habits, but I just started telling myself, if nothing else, I am going to work on keeping the kitchen clean. If the whole house is in shambles, but the kitchen is clean, I have succeeded at something. And I focused on that. And I cleaned up after every single meal. And next thing you know, it was a habit. And I found myself starting to wash the after dinner dishes without giving it a second thought. And it was honestly wonderful because it stopped taking up so much mental energy and just became something I did. Something I think a lot about when it comes to things like this is the Bible verse. Whoever is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. Keeping the kitchen clean consistently can be hard. But in the scheme of things, it is little. And if I'm going to be a great keeper of the home, an excellent wife, one day, Lord willing, a mother, and faithful and accomplished in several other aspects of my life, why not start by doing the dishes when I'm done eating? To me, it just makes a lot of sense. Now, if you're very short on time and you have to run out the door or, you know, kids are screaming, whatever is going on. My advice would be to do what you can. Even if that means setting a timer for five minutes and cleaning whatever you can in that five minutes. It is better than nothing and you will be surprised what just five minutes of vigorous dish scrubbing can do. Remember that done is better than perfect. You're doing amazing, sweetie. Keep going. My next tip is to spend just five minutes a day cleaning a room, any room. I usually go with the one that's mess is making my chest hurt the worst that day. Just set your timer and have at it for five minutes. These tasks are short sections of time for a reason. As a homemaker, a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home wife, or a working mom, life gets hectic. I'm sure for some more than others. And sometimes the house, especially a house that never seems to be clean enough or clean longer than 10 minutes, is the last thing that you want to think about at the end of a long day. But the point is that anyone can spare five minutes. And when you do these things consistently, faithfully, you will see a cleaner home day in and day out. Even if the transformation isn't super noticeable on day one, the effects compound and it will be eventually. Maybe by day four. Just keep going. My next tip is to put your kitchen to bed. I actually got this tip from Mrs. Midwest's Instagram. I will link it in the description. And I love this idea. You put your kids to bed, you put yourself to bed, but you can also put your kitchen to bed, which 
basically just means making sure it's nice and clean at the end of the night before you turn off the lights. This really goes hand in hand with cleaning up after every meal. And if you are cleaning up after a meal, then this step really shouldn't take you very long at all. But I like to include it on my daily checklist just as an extra barrier to make sure that the kitchen is always clean. If I slacked after dinner and ended up watching TV instead of cleaning up, or if we were out all day and I never got to the breakfast dishes, having the nightly goal to put your kitchen to bed protects against ever having the kitchen get out of control messy. It's also a super nice feeling to wake up to a clean, sparkly kitchen. Think of it as a gift to you, from you, for tomorrow morning, and thank yourself later. Tip number nine is to spend five minutes a day either decluttering, organizing, or a combination of both. Again, I usually go with the area that needs it most and has been annoying me the most lately, and I just do what I can for five minutes. This ensures that the problem areas are always getting tended to, and it eliminates the need for ever having a huge house reset. Tip number 10 is to have weekly cleaning goals. This may look different depending on your home, but for me, it includes dusting all the furniture, sweeping and mopping the floors, cleaning all of the mirrors in the house, including the bathroom mirror, so I don't have to worry about it during my morning wipe down, tidying each room and changing the sheets. These are just my basic house maintenance tasks that ensure that the house never gets out of control messy. And my last tip and possibly the most important that I've already touched on, but I will say it again, is that done is better than perfect. I used to only start dusting the furniture and cleaning the floors after the house was perfectly tidied and everything was put away. But recently I've been scooching the clutter over sometimes because I'd rather have a cluttered TV stand and clean floors than a half tidied TV stand and filthy floors that haven't been cleaned in weeks because I keep on trying to tidy first and then lose the motivation or time or both. You know what I'm saying? Perfectionism can make a cleaning routine a thousand times harder. So let it go. Do your best. Decide which rooms are your priority and work on keeping those ones clean 80% of the time. And just like a diet, if you mess up, don't say forget it and give up for three weeks until you have the motivation to be perfect again. Just pick up where you left off. And I promise you will see a difference in the cleanliness of your home. Now, for the most important part of the video. If you like having a clean home, then you probably also like pie. And I have the best flaky pie crust recipe that you have ever tried linked next. So I highly encourage you to go check that out next. Trust me, you won't regret it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos on simpler living, biblical femininity, and the art of homemaking. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in my next one.